We tend to think very specifically or very quickly around kind of the, the more obvious types of trauma that we might think of, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Um, we also think a lot of adverse childhood experiences in relation to trauma. So then we think about things like justice involvement, um, untreated mental health concerns for in, um, among caregivers, uh, separation from caregivers. Um, and now we're starting to incorporate things like intergenerational trauma um, and loss of culture. Um, we can also look at things like uh, medical procedures early in life that, that bring uh, trauma type experiences uh, to the body uh, before the person is able to recognize or articulate what's going on for them. I would define trauma as any experience that overloads someone's nervous system or any experience at which they don't feel like they're really able to handle it. So it's something that's different for every person and every kid. And in terms of whether or not we want to use trauma or other terms, I think it's helpful because it allows us to understand the significance of what someone might be going through and what they might be struggling with that we don't see from the outside, since it is an emotional, physical, embodied experience. There's kids that come in and they could witness um, a car crash on the way to school. And that right there is trauma, but people don't recognize um, certain things that happen in people's lives as trauma. I mean, it could be something really small that, uh, and minute, minute that people don't even recognize as trauma, and a lot of kids are carrying it. So from an Indigenous perspective, trauma is um, very collective, it's land-based, it, it connects us to all of our relations, uh, and we often think of trauma as something that is a challenge, something that needs to be overcome. Um, Indigenous folks think about trauma as, yes, something that can be lived, something that can be vicarious or intergenerational, um, but also something that brings really important trauma knowledge with it, intergenerational knowledge. So for Indigenous students in, in, in BC, it, it impacts their their learning and their development in a variety of ways, depending on the type of trauma that they're dealing with, right? We know that because of the colonial history of Canada, there are, there's lots of intergenerational trauma uh, for Indigenous people, right? They carry the trauma of the residential schooling that was experienced by their parents and grandparents. Uh, and so this can cause a lot of, um, you know, triggers and reactions to simply being in a, in a school environment, right? Uh, we know that because of the statistics around Indigenous folks, that, which continue to be persistent around education and employment and, and health and suicide and incarceration, um, there's lots of lived trauma that Indigenous people continue to experience. Um, and that can impact learning in a variety of ways and, and development in a variety of ways, particularly when it's connected to risky behaviors like substance abuse and other things. There's concerns with the term trauma, there's concerns with the adverse childhood experiences vocabulary. Um, neither of them necessarily capture the breadth of what we want to talk about, or you risk broadening the conversation so much that you miss some of the specificity that is also critical uh, to really supporting people.